how to test for scoliosis. Unfortunately, scoliosis isn't always noticeable. noticeable. People can live with years with scoliosis before they even know they have it. And this is because scoliosis ranges widely in severity from mild to moderate to severe to very severe. And, and when scoliosis is in its mild condition, it can be very hard to notice and the symptoms can be very subtle. However, as the condition becomes more severe, the effects become much more noticeable. In fact, we like to use the, the ratio is that every 10 degrees of progression doubles what you see. So a 20 degree curve doubles the effect to a 10 degree curve, but a 30 degree curve doubles the effect from 20, but quadruples the effect from 10. So every 10 degrees doubles what you see. In addition, scoliosis is a progressive disorder. So therefore, it's not likely the curve is going to stay exactly where it is at the time of diagnosis. We expect scoliosis to progress. Now, the way you diagnose a scoliosis is uh, in a very specific manner. And there are many different spinal conditions that can affect the health or the integrity of the spine. There are a number of spinal conditions that can involve a loss of, of a healthy spinal alignment, including a cur sideways curvature in the frontal, lumen, uh, frontal alignment of the spine. However, a scoliosis has some very unique characteristics. Scoliosis is the development of an unnatural sideways spinal curvature. And in order for it to be considered a true scoliosis, the curvature must always have a tourist twist or a rotation. And this rotation is into, into the concavity of the scoliosis. And this was makes scoliosis a complex three-dimensional condition, not just a bend or shift. For a, a scoliosis curvature also needs to be a minimum size. The Cobb angle measurement must be at least 10 degrees or greater for it to be considered a scoliosis. A Cobb angle is an angle that is determined on an x-ray that involves drawing lines from the topmost tilted vertebra to the bottommost tilted vertebra and these two lines intersect and they result in an angle that's measured in degrees and the size of the angle determines the severity of either mild, moderate, severe or very severe. The bigger the angle, the more severe the condition. In order for there to be an official diagnosis of scoliosis, there needs to be an x-ray or some type of image to determine the patient's Cobb angle and actual size. So x-ray is by far the most common. However, their MRIs and CT scans can be used. However, they're less accurate because they're normally done laying down and that would tend to underestimate the size of the scoliosis. So if a person thinks they have scoliosis, the only way to know for sure is to get a diagnosis from a medical professional. However, there are some early signs that could be that could be helpful to determine do you think if you have it to actually get this diagnosis. And the biggest thing is postural changes. If postural changes were noticed in adolescence and we're seeing the increased development of these postural distortions occur in the adult stage, typically there means there is a scoliosis and there is some progression. There's never a normal time for an uh, adolescent to have abnormal posture. What I'm meaning is asymmetrical posture, one shoulder higher than the other uneven waist, uneven hips, uneven rib cage. There is one side that looks different than the other. There's never a normal time for that to occur. If there's any type of asymmetrical posture, there definitely should be an evaluation and an examination done by doctors. Screening exams performed by school nurses across the, across the states uh, have changed in terms of their frequency, how often they're happening and who's doing them and who's not doing them. So you can't just rely on your child being evaluated by some school nurse or some school um, school care, or some school doctor because it's not always done. And remember, it, scoliosis only shows itself as curves worsen. So if the child happens to get evaluated and they haven't gone through their growth spurt yet, the curve could be too small to be seen. However, maybe a year later after this school nurse checks them, that's when they actually find it because the curve, they actually grew. And since they normally check kids all at one time, and since girls and boys grow at different times and every, even, even they grow at different times among the same sex, there could definitely be different times of progression. So a scoliosis screening, screening typically involves a physical examination of the patient, and then it typically involves a family history. If there's any family history of scoliosis anywhere in the family, we know that scoliosis tends to be familiar, so there should be a screening should be taken uh, more closely because it could be more likely somebody in the family somebody else in the family could develop scoliosis. Now we know it's not genetic, but we know there's family 
tendencies. Observing a patient's posture and gait, we can learn a lot about a patient's spine when we look at this, but the most common test that's done is something called Adam's forward bending test. This is typically the initial test that's done. And this is when a patient actually bends forward to actually look to see if there could be any scoliosis. This, this exam done with a combination of something called a scoli meter, which can make the test more accurate. Now, Adam's forward te bending test is when a patient bends forward because the spine becomes more visible and normally any misalignment is easier to see. They typically have patients bend forward 90 degrees from their waist and they try to round their spine. When they try to round their spine in this position, any type of asymmetries are easier, easily, easily seen at this time. And also they use a scoli meter, which is kind of like a level for the spine and they run it up up the spine or down the spine from the neck to the lumbar spine or from the lumbar spine up to the neck. And they're looking for any type of unleveling in their ribs or in the waist or in the, any part of the tissues of the body. If we see any kind of significant degree difference, typically three to four degrees or greater from one side to the other, that normally indicates to have an X-ray. If we see any type of asymmetry and we have a positive atom forward bending test, typically those indications typically say an x-ray is, is ordered to see what's actually happening on the scoliosis. And again, an x-ray by far is the number one image used to determine a patient's Cobb angle. And that will determine whether the curve is either mild, moderate, or severe. Now, we definitely recommend early detection, but early, de early detection doesn't always mean that the patient's gonna not progress. Early detection is only valuable if there's early treatment. Unfortunately, most traditional approaches to scoliosis, that even if the scoliosis is diagnosed as a mild scoliosis, they normally don't recommend any treatment till curves progress into the severe range. By then, the reduction is much more difficult and surgery is much more eminent at this point or much more likely to be recommended. So here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, that we definitely value early detection, but we definitely combine it with early treatment. And only conservative, proactive, uh, structural approaches to scoliosis can actually stop a curve from progressing and reduce these curves. So therefore they never progress to the severe ranges where scoliosis surgery could be recommended. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.